So I'm now going to hand over to Professor Alan Bell and Philippa Smith from AUT and the World Internet Project NZ to tell us about the internet biographies of New Zealanders for the next 15 minutes or so. So welcome to them. Thank you, James. And um, it's really lovely to be back at NetHui again. There's a lot of energy here, and um, it just goes to show there's a value of face-to-face -face communication even within the network, networked world that we're in. Um, I'm Philippa Smith. I've been involved in the World Internet Project since 2007, and I'm here today with the director of the New Zealand Project, Professor Alan Bell. The uh, project that we conduct is uh, supported by the National Library of New Zealand, Internet New Zealand and AUT University. For those of you who may not know uh, the type of research that we do, I just want to do a, a quick overview. Um, the World Internet Project involves about 30 different countries. It's a collaboration where we look at the social, political and economic impact of the internet. Uh, we've conducted three New Zealand surveys since 2007, and we've sampled uh, just over 1,200 um, New Zealanders aged 12 years and above. Uh, we have shared questions with um, uh, the other countries so we can compare how New Zealand sits globally. We also have questions designed specifically for New Zealand, which gives us um, an, an extra uh, bit of information, and the interviews are conducted by telephone uh, by Phoenix Research here in Auckland. We conducted our last survey towards the end of last year. Um, just some of the highlights that came out of that. Um, the use of the internet and broadband access in New Zealand have continued to rise. The usage of smartphones and other handheld wireless devices has risen sharply. Social networking grown quickly and is strongly stratified by age. Signs of growing internet mobility and increasing embeddedness of the internet uh, is in, in everyday life. It's just become so much more part of a normal way of life for, for the great majority of us. Um, in the respondents in the survey, um, a majority rated the internet as important for information, while newspapers uh, were losing their influence. And at the same time, the internet has become slightly less important for entertainment particularly for people in their 20s. So it raises the question, has the internet shifted from being for fun to being pragmatic? So what we thought we would do this time round, rather than showing a lot of graphs and statistics, um, now that we have done three surveys, it gives us an opportunity to look at some of the patterns that are emerging. Um, so we're going from trends to narratives, stories of how New Zealanders relate to the internet. Um, so Alan and I are going to present um, just a, a small number of snapshots of how individuals' perceptions, attitudes, use, and their valuing of the internet has changed over this period. So basically we're linking the micro-dimension of the individual in their daily lives to the macro-dimension of the internet engagement in society. So the first profile that um, I'm going to talk about I ah, love this modern technology. Okay, let's try again. Yay. Um, Billy, a pseudonym, who's uh, in his 20s. He's Asian and male. He's been an internet user since 2007, and he has broadband access. And I do need to point out here that the demographics um, that we have here is not representative. It's just giving you a sense of a, a uh, profile of one of the people that has been in involved in the study. So, um, as I said, Billy has been an internet user in all three, for all three survey periods, and um, let's have a look at um, his, his uh, response to how important he rates um, various media with, media with regards to the entertainment. So, this slide here, you can see in 2007, uh, he uh, uh, rated the internet as very important as, in his life, whereas television and newspapers and radio uh, were not so important at all. So uh, we went back to him for the second and third survey, and uh, this is what occurred. Oops. I'll try that again because it's supposed to be animated. There we go. 
Okay, so we can see over the six, three survey years, it was quite obvious that not only did the internet occupy um, a place of very high importance, but it was the only medium that solidly remained in its position. So while Billy had changed his mind about how important to television, newspapers and radio are as sources of entertainment, he saw the internet as always very important in this regard. If we look at the same sources of media, but in regard to how he rated um, them uh, for sources of information. You can see in 2007, the internet, television, and daily newspapers were all very important. So while he regarded the internet, television, and newspaper on that higher level, it was only the internet that consistently uh, stayed there as being important over those three surveys. Not surprisingly, Billy's online activities cross a wide spectrum of internet use, some being done quite frequently and others several times a day. He surfs the web, he uses email, accesses online videos, looks for news online, does instant messaging online, reads blogs, and of course is on Facebook and has made new friends online and met them in person. Billy's online activities also provide a good example of how the internet seems to reflect the shifts in an individual's uh, status. This next slide compares the frequency of uh, playing games online, which in 2007 he did um, almost on a daily basis, with looking for jobs online, which in 2007 he didn't do at all. So in the years that followed, things obviously changed for him. Um, may have been because he graduated from university with a degree, so um, playing ga games online were not so uh, frequent and looking for jobs became much more important in his life. So I'm going to pass over to Alan now to um, follow on with some further profiles and, uh, and he'll give you a summary at the end. Thanks very much, Philippa, and um, thank you to Internet New Zealand for the invitation to talk about our research and also um, for your continued support of the project. So we've had one uh, young Asian man we have talked about, and our next, our next person is a Māori man in his 60s. And... When we first surveyed him in 2007, he was not a user of the internet. He did not plan to be a user of the internet, even though he had computer access at home. But we came back to him in 2009, and by that time he was online, and um, remained so in, in 2011. And also he apparently was immediately on broadband, and so um, we have someone who's gone from being a user and uh, being a non-user and not intending to be a user to, in fact, um, becoming a user of the internet. And, in fact, uh, quite a wide-ranging and rapacious user. So he's uh, emailing daily, he's surfing the web, he's reading news, he's seeking health information, he's playing games, he's on Facebook, he's meeting new friends online, and he has even gone on to meet some of those new friends in person. And so we have here somebody who's gone from non-use to a very high level of use um, of the internet um, over the course of the four years that we've been surveying. In terms of Tane's use of the inter internet for entertainment um, and rating of the importance of the internet, um, obviously in 2007 when he's not a user, the net doesn't rate very highly for entertainment purposes, um, but that in fact shifts uh, somewhat. So the internet importance rises, and in particular the importance of radio, uh, radio drops for entertainment. As far as information is concerned, you can see that the, uh, the newspaper um, was tops in 2007 and the internet very lowly rated. Um, but as we move across the subsequent two surveys, um, the internet comes um, 
well up and the, the daily newspaper um, maintains quite a reasonably high level, in fact, and uh, television um, takes a dip. So that's our older Māori man, Tane, and our third and last, uh, last profile um, is Liz, who's a young Pākehā woman, and she's a digital native. She's been online the whole time, and she is very active online. In particular, she is active um, on mobile access to the internet. In 2007, she was not accessing the net on mobile at all, and so probably in New Zealand was hardly anybody else. Um, but by 2009, she is accessing the internet via mobile for several hours in a week. And by 2011, mobile access has gone up to 10 and more hours a week for Liz. And so through the mobile access, her usage has become very heavily embedded in her daily life as she moves around. Her uses, as you would imagine, are wide-ranging and, in fact, very frequent. So the size of the icon represents the relative frequency of the usage. So she's surfing the web, emailing and accessing news several times a day. She's looking at travel info. She's instant, instant messaging and downloading videos every day, daily, she says, and looking at blogs and download, downloading audio um, every week. And so that's a very high level of usage and a very wide range of usage. Her rating, um, remember she's been a user all along, the internet has always been high for entertainment and the other media stack up below that. And as we go to, uh, to 2011, that kind of um, hierarchy remains, but the order changes so that the daily hard copy newspaper, in fact, comes up and the radio goes down. For information, um, a similar stacking of, um, of media, again, with the internet at most important. And the internet remains the most important um, for information, but you'll see again that the daily um, hard copy newspaper comes up and radio takes uh, something of a nosedive in importance for her. As I've said, she's online um, or by mobile, and she accesses Facebook. But one of the interesting things about her is that she has made no new friends online. So clearly Facebook is serving for her um, as a means of keeping co constant contact um, with her already existing friends, rather from making new friends. OK, so to some conclusions. So we've talked about individual profiles because having resurveyed some of the same people for three surveys in a row across a period of uh, four years enables us to start to say some things about changing usage for people. And so we see that Billy's gone from gaming to job seeking through the internet, Tane has gone from non-user to user, and Liz has gone from wired to mobile. Their biographies, you'll see, reflect the general social trends, but remember they also represent individual choices and individual sets of practices. And as the survey continues um, with next year's survey, we'll be able to see even more, um, particularly how these people and other individuals um, develop their usages. And see how the internet has changed the behaviour of these particular people. It's changed how they relate to others. So Liz uses Facebook to relate to her friends where she didn't uh, presumably previously. Billy looks for a job online. Um, Tane doesn't watch TV as much, presumably, um, but he does use, uh, use the internet a lot more. And it affects how they use their space. So Liz is on a line by mobile so much that that is affecting the way in which she moves through space in her daily life. OK, so that's our profiles. And just to make some general points about, um, about the value we see of this kind of research, that in our view it pro provides really good baseline information about how the, <clears throat> how the internet operates within the lives of New Zealanders. It grounds our common knowledge in scientific data, so some of what we have told you is exactly what you'd expect to be the case. This provides undergirding data about that. But it also un overturns some things that we might expect. So the fact that Liz hasn't made new friends 
um, but uses uh, Facebook to keep up with old friends, and the fact that the, um, the hard copy newspaper has become more important for her and not less important. It also generates new questions, like what happens as people move through different life stages. So as Billy's gone from being a student to uh, being a worker, um, his use of the internet has changed. And Tane has gone from not intending to um, ever use the internet to actually picking up that. And it would be fascinating to know what the actual triggers were for that particular um, particular move. And so we think research like this enables us to um, think again about our preconceptions for the internet and its usage and the way in which New Zealanders are working it. So thank you very much. Just to credit again our, uh, our funders, the National Library, uh, now part of the Department of Internal Affairs in Wellington, so government funding and Internet New Zealand. And just to credit uh, the entire team, Philippa, um, Andy Gibson, our analyst, Charles, our uh, methodological advisor, me, and in particular for this presentation, Alwyn Aguirre, who's down here and has put together the uh, very good PowerPoint for today. Thank you very much. I just, hi there, hello, hi there, just a question on your definitions, um, I'm a massive radio listener but I do it via podcasts, I love TV episodes, I do it via online TV channels, how do you differentiate between your web, radio, TV segments here, because it seems that's probably changed. It's definitely changed, but our questions do largely differentiate. We have one set of questions that ask people to rate the importance of media, and to that one we expect to get, as it were, the STEAM technology answer. Um, we have another set of questions that ask for frequency of offline usage, and we calibrate between those two. So, surprisingly enough, Billy's usage of newspapers and Liz's is in fact genuine hard copy usage um, presumably they may also be reading online. So those graphs you showed us, that was the physical transport delivery media, not the actual content? Yes. So it's me listening to wireless reception on a device or reading a physical paper, not reading a newspaper online? Mm. Correct. Okay, thanks. Okay, I think that's it. Um, we have a small gift for you, and we promise not to survey you as to your usage mm. of oh, this. Of course, thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. And you may have missed it, but uh, thank you for introducing that wonderful phrase, undergirding data. If you didn't get that, copyright on that phrase, undergirding data. I thought that was fantastic. Thank you.